matin. Bon matin. Ça va? Oui, ça va. Et toi? Ah, c'était bon, c'est oui. <rire> Bon matin! <laughs> we woke up here in sunny Carleton sur Mer and it is an absolutely perfectly beautiful day today. Yeah, we couldn't have asked for anything better and we decided to start off our day down here at this park right on the water so that we could visit the lighthouse. This is a local landmark here. It was first built in 1872, then they rebuilt it in 1911. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there was a fire after that, but the community got together and rebuilt it in 1984. And so for a long, long time, this has been an important marker for the people here. And uh, this land where the park is uh, has some historical significance because Jacques Cartier was the first European uh, to meet with the Mi'kmaq people who are already living here, about 300 of them, on July 9th, 1534. So there's a, a commemoration plaque here for that as well. So it just feels like the perfect place to keep exploring the Quebec Maritimes. I'm just walking along the beach here and everyone just seems so relaxed <laughs> and happy and it just feels like holiday. It just says holiday. The air is so fresh, clean, the sun is shining. What more could you want? It's hard to leave here, honestly, because I can imagine very easily just like throwing down a blanket, curling up with a book and a picnic and totally. spending the whole day here. But mm -hmm. um, the guest phase beckons, so we're gonna <laughs> head onwards. But the, the town here as well, like we're right on the water. Just behind us is the town and there's a beautiful church with this silver steeple, mm. all in the shadow of Mont Saint-Joseph, which is right behind us. <laughs> um, but there are more, more mountains to come. Oh, so, plenty more. On we go. <laughs> be a road trip if you didn't find oversized fruit by the side of the road. 100%. <laughs> you can check that one off of our guest busy road trip list. This is a farm. Ferme Bourdage. And they have been farming here for seven generations, a long, long time. And now you can come and pick strawberries. They sell a whole bunch of goods and they also make strawberry wine. So good to know. When and you're you in can get here. hilarious boomerangs like these ones. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which were a lot of fun to take. This is a fun stop. Yeah. <laughs> so fun speaking to people in French. I know. <laughs> I'm a bit rusty. You're in your element. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> I'm like, c'est toujours mieux avec le lait uh, naturel, par la voix. <laughs> Which basically means it's always better with normal milk and not oat milk. <laughs> I heard you say, c'est très weird, no? <laughs> c'est weird, right? <laughs> oh, it's good. Ooh. It's really good. Oh, it's so sweet and perfect. You know what I love? It's really fresh. Look at the straw. It's so cute. The detail of the pink and white straw. C'est très mignon. <laughs> mignon. This is a happy, happy man. <laughs> Allons-y. <laughs> Bienvenue la famille Bourdage depuis 1821. Point <laughs> ORG. I won't stop. Entrez. We just left. Oh. Okay, this goes this way. What is in that milkshake? <laughs> they drugged it. I haven't been able to try the strawberry milkshake yet. Someone was hogging it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say I blame them. So now I get to try some. Oh, that's so fresh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. You can tell this was made at the place where they grow the strawberries. That's how fresh it tastes. Nothing tastes artificial at all. Oh. Maybe we should have got two. 
I know. <laughs> that was a mistake. Regret. <laughs> mm, good stop. Uh, pulled off the main highway in New Carlisle to come down to the beach because they have this beautiful boardwalk um, right along the water and it's accessible so if you're using a stroller or a wheelchair then the beach is accessible which is fantastic and it's so hot and sunny <laughs> <laughs> no rain today and this is just gorgeous perfect spot to just sit and have your lunch yeah too bad we already finished our milkshake <laughs> <laughs> You know how much I love history and this is a real treat where we are today. This is a national historic site called Bon de Pêche de Passe-Bébiac and this is Quebec's first cod port. So the cod industry is hugely important and significant for Canada and also long before Canada's confederation in 1867, about a hundred years before that, they were fishing cod here and exporting it to different parts of the world. And it's a national historic site now where you can come and do a tour. I'm, I love it. <laughs> I want to spend the whole day here just asking a bunch of questions because it's so interesting. They have a bunch of buildings here that are original hundreds of years old. There was a huge fire, unfortunately, in 1964 that burned over 30 of them to the ground. You can still see where they were and they do have photographs from that time. But just being able to see the original buildings and the, the purposes that they served is so interesting. There were multiple businesses that were based here and operated from here and employed many, many people. Whole, whole families were employed here uh, from this area. Visiting here, you get a really great overview of not only what the cod industry was like, but also the different skills that people had and the way that they used those skills at every part of the export process from uh, fishing the cod, of course, to building the barrels that the cod were then put into, to pressing the cod and salting and drying the fish, um, the blacksmith who were making the square-headed nails, uh, the people who were cutting down trees to make the barrels and to make the boats, uh, the people who built the boats. Like, you really get a sense of every stage of the process. You can see the blacksmith shop where uh, the blacksmith gave us a demonstration and still has a uh, original bellows, these giant uh, leather bellows from 1840. I can't believe that, that are still in use by him today. He showed us how he would make a square-headed nail and told us all the reasons why a square-headed nail is better, especially for building ships. And so people all day would just be occupied making the nails. And then a different craftsman would use those nails to build the boats. Uh, it would take them about a month to build one fishing boat. And that fishing boat was made using only wood and nails, which really impresses me. And uh, it took one month to make, and 35 years to 50 years later, that boat was still in use, which is an incredible <laughs> return um, for making a boat in one month. And they could get up to 600 pounds of cod into a single fishing boat before the boat basically sank. So that was the limit. This model is three sizes too small. <laughs> it's three sizes smaller than an actual fishing boat made here would be. But it's a really good way of showing the way that they constructed the boats. They use three different kinds of wood in a really ingenious way. So the bottom is made of tamarack because tamarack hardens in water, perfect for the bottom of a boat. The ends are made of yellow birch and they use the root because it's naturally curved, perfect for the sides of a boat. And the strips along the sides are built like this, kind of tiered, and they're made of cedar because cedar expands in water. So once you put the nails in and you build the boat like this, it's naturally watertight. So cool. <laughs> Nerding out. <laughs> We're in the carpentry house right now where the carpenters would build the boats and um, they have a bunch of chalk writing on the rafters and the walls and they date their original and they mm. date back to almost 200 years ago in some cases and I just love the idea that they were graffiti artists yeah <laughs> I just I love the idea that throughout time 
people have wanted to kind of leave a mark, literally. And how amazing that the mark that they left is still here for us to see. Being Canadian, getting to see this, I just, I love it. I, I'm just, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> come here, come take a look. I am disappointed because they have a restaurant here, which I heard was really good. And you can have a really um, kind of local heritage culinary type experience. So we were looking forward to eating here, but it is unfortunately closed today. So we, we're gonna miss out on that. But if you're here, take the tour, have a lunch uh, and say hi for me. inside when we could eat outside in a giant cup. <laughs> so cute. Completely agree. I love it. <laughs> we made a little roadside stop in Chandler uh, because of this super cute cafe behind me, the yellow building. It's Mish Cafe. And uh, we got a brownie and chocolate zucchini bread, mm. both of which look amazing. And Mark ordered something called the Reese. As soon as I heard it was called Reese, I knew you were gonna order that. Couldn't resist. Uh, it's basically chocolate and peanut butter, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. And this one is, I had to order because it's totally unique to here. It's called the Ari. It's named after the girl who either used to work here or does work here. And she started making this for herself and I guess her friends started to come in requesting it. So they actually put it on the menu and named it after her. And it's espresso, uh, oat milk, and maple syrup. Mm. So that sounds amazing. They sent us stirred up, otherwise I would just, well, I mean, I'm okay with drinking straight maple syrup, but <laughs> I should probably listen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Ari knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I love that it's only here. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. It's just like a Reese. <laughs> <laughs> it's a winning combination every time. Per se, we're at a little lookout point on the top of the hill, and right behind us, there in between us, that's Per se Rock. And if you ever see uh, photographs of the Gaspésie region, you are bound to see Per se. It is a well known image. <laughs> so it's really exciting to finally see it because we've been anticipating it kind of all day. So we're going to stay the night and wake up here tomorrow to do more exploring, but first, we need dinner. on the water at a restaurant called Maison du Pêcheur. And when we got here, there was a huge line outside, which when you're going to eat, is always a good sign because it means people know that it's worth the wait. And our uh, appetizer has just arrived. We got the fisherman's platter for two. And also, this view is incredible. 
there's windows everywhere around the restaurant and you have a view of Per Se Rock. It's absolutely gorgeous and we got here just as the sun was hitting the rock and it was so beautiful, perfect time to arrive. So I'm going to tell you um, all of the little things that we have to try on the platter. There's a salmon tartare with apple, Labrador tea grilled octopus uh, with pickled fennel and smoked sour cream, a mussel salad, Labrador tea arctic char escabeche, a salmon gravlax with spices, and then Atlantic scallops with citrus, and a sea urchin foam. And all of the seafood here is fresh, so it's a great time to also try something new, which is what we're doing. <laughs> circle moment because uh, we, they brought out some cod butter and having spent most of the afternoon learning about the history of the cod industry in this area it makes sense it feels very appropriate that I should now try some cod much lighter flavor than I was expecting actually nice whipped texture <laughs> Next, we ordered a trio of smoked salmon. All of it is Gaspésien, all of it is local to Per Se, and some of it uses beer from Pit Caribou, which is a local microbrewery, and also maple syrup. So it's very local, very Canadian, very Gaspésien. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> adore smoked salmon. I love eating it and this tastes so, so fresh. It's delicious. Mark and I are sharing all of these dishes, by the way. So we also got something called the trident, which, as you may have guessed, is three things. The first is salmon with maple sugar. Then there's lobster with an orange liqueur and scallops with whiskey sauce, and also a uh, risotto. And all of it, again, is local to Per Se. That's the best salmon of the night. The maple is unreal. Really? That brings salmon to the next level. I didn't know salmon could get better, <laughs> but it just did. I don't actually always like lobster. <laughs> I know a lot of people love it. I don't always like it. I like this. I find when seafood is really, really fresh, it, it tastes really good, don't you think? Agreed. Yeah, and everything is just super fresh, and the sauce. I mean, after all, if you're like me, you think that food is kind of a vehicle for sauce, <laughs> and this sauce is really nice. Sauce delivers. We've just finished an absolutely wonderful meal at La Maison du Pêcheur and it's just a special place. It's a family-run business, it's right on the water, some incredible views virtually from anywhere inside because there's windows everywhere, right onto Per Se Rock and across the water. Highly recommend being here at um, dusk as the sun is going down for some truly spectacular views of the light on the rock. The food is so, so fresh. It's all local to the Gaspésie area and also to Per Se, the specific town that we're in. The servers were so nice and so helpful. And just from start to finish, from the moment we walked in the door, we just felt so welcome and the food was delicious. So you really can't ask for something more. I highly, highly recommend coming here. Call ahead because this is a very popular, busy place. There's a line when we came and they'll probably... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, somebody's just turned their lights off. There'll probably be a line when you come too because word gets around when a place is as good as this. So call ahead, get yourself a reservation and enjoy it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. I would love to know what your favorite part was. So leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for lots more travel adventures and we will see you in our next video. Bye.